All right, now we're going to do an example of the uh, adaptive exponential smooth. Um, we're given uh, the forecast uh, for the next month, which is 115. We're given the alpha of 0.3, and we know our adaptive rate is plus or minus 0 0.02. Um, generally, these are used more for us if you think like the economy is going to be varying along with your forecast. You kind of use the adaptive to stimulate the economy or what other other environmental uh, features driving your forecast. All right, the first thing we can cal calculate is the error. Our error is one, our actual amount, minus how much we had forecasted, or negative five. We're going to do the forecast for week two, so we're going to start out with an alpha of 0 0.3. F sub T1 stands for the forecast for the next period. So we're in period one, we're doing the period for week two. So our F sub T1 is actually week two in this case. So our week one forecast was 115, our alpha is 0 0.3, and our error was minus five. I know I say error, we are deal with it. <laughs> But it's, uh, so if we multiply that out, um, we should come out to 113.5 as a forecast here. All right, so forecasting is exactly the same with the exponential smooth as with the adaptive exponential smooth. What's going to differ is what we use for an alpha for the next forecast. And the way we calculate that is, we do a, a plus alpha and a minus alpha here and determine which alpha is the closest and that's what we use for our next period's forecast. All right, so for my plus alpha, the plus is my alpha currently is 0 0.3, my adaptive rate is 0.2, so for plus alpha, I just add the 0.2 to the 0.3. <clears throat> I have the same error. And so for my plus alpha, this comes out to 112.5. All right, we do the same thing. This time we subtract 0.2 for the minus alpha, so my new alpha is 0.1 here. And that comes out to 114.5. What this represents is a range. We have the range between 112 and 114, and of course our forecast sits right in the middle. We have a range below or for the plus above, and a range below. <clears throat> My actual forecast comes in at the end of week two of 165. If it just happened to be 113 and was in this range, we'd use the same alpha. But in this case, 165 comes out over here. So that's telling me that I have to use my a uh, new minus alpha for that. So my alpha for the next period becomes 0 0.1 or 0 0.3 minus 0 0.2. <clears throat> all right, now we're all set to do our forecast for week three. Um, we calculate our error because we have our actual in now. So 165 minus 113 is 51.5. My forecasted amount for week two is 113.5. My new alpha is 0 0.1. My error is 51.5. And so my new forecast is 118. Same thing, I do a plus and minus alpha. Yeah. 
All right, so that gives me a minus alpha of 108.4 and a plus alpha of 129. It's actually 128.89999, but we round it up. <clears throat> you notice this time it's slightly different since we had a positive error versus a negative error that we'll find our range once again. Once our actual numbers come in, it comes in at 150. If we look at our range, 150 is over here. Because it's greater than 129. Again, if it came in at 120, we'd continue with the point 0.1. But my 150 is greater than 129. So I use my adaptive. Of and I add 0.2, because I'm on the plus side. I add the 0.2. My alpha for my next period will be 0.3. And we just continue that way until we fill in the whole chart. All right, so here's our final solution um, with all our forecasted values all our alphas, all our plus and minus alphas, and the different alphas we use through to calculate it. Um, if you were to plot this out, you'd notice that because um, of the smoothing, there's a slight delay. Um, as we have these big gains up in here, you notice our forecast, our actual jumped up to 465. It took our forecast another period to get up that high. And then when it started dropping again, it didn't drop quite as fast. That's one of the things the smoothing factor will do for you.